Jaguar XE delivers a smartly executed take on the compact executive genre, offering something appealingly different to the usual German suspects. On paper at least, it seems to have the design, technology and ambition necessary to succeed in this segment, with the dynamics of a BMW and the luxury of a Mercedes, plus all the efficiency and connectivity modern business buyers now expect. It's a strong contender. The XC, says Jaguar, changes everything. It's certainly the most advanced, efficient and refined sports saloon the brand has ever built. A compact executive model that at last offers a credible alternative to that 3 Series C-Class or A4 you might have been considering. To call it new almost seems to be an understatement. From its aluminium architecture to its frugal Ingenium engines and the purpose-built Wolverhampton factory that builds them, there's a clean sheet feel to this design underpinned by the two billion pounds worth of investment that's been poured into it. Everything, in other words, is very different to what we were given the last time Jaguar entered this segment back in 2001 with the ill-fated X-Type. That car showed this Coventry mark the hard way that there are no shortcuts to success in the compact executive segment, something brands as significant as Toyota have also learnt to their cost. The Japanese maker tried for years to create a Lexus IS by simply reworking an Avensis, and Jaguar's experience in trying to fashion that X-Type out of a humbler Ford Mondeo was just the same. Forget all that though, for this is a very different car. A proper Jaguar and a proper challenger to the Germans in this class that arrives with a very clear objective. To return its brand to the forefront of this sector, the position it enjoyed with the iconic Mark II model back in the 60s. Now that's a lot to ask, which is why the brand took so long to re-enter this crucial segment. Now that it has, expectations are high and may well be met if this car performs as well on the road as it seems to on paper. Clever aluminium intensive architecture has made this the lightest yet the stiffest Jaguar ever and made it possible to fit the segment's most sophisticated suspension setup in pursuit of ultimate driving dynamics. Then there's the fact that the two litre Ingenium diesel variants most buyers will want are unbettered for efficiency in this segment. Plus, there's in-control infotainment technology inside that promises buyers a fresh era of in-car connectivity. It all sounds pretty promising. Time to put this car to the test. So, what's it like? Well, sporting, certainly. You sit low in contour-hugging seats in front of a chunky sports steering wheel that, like the deeply cowled instrument dials, is borrowed from Jaguar's F-Type sports car. It's a driver's environment, a place to do business with the road, with the raised centre console adding to the cockpit-style feel. Stab the pulsing start button, and if, like most potential owners, you've opted for automatic transmission, the brand's trademark rotary drive selector rises up into the palm of your hand. You're ready. Set off and you get to experience what Jaguar's engineers call the 50 meter feel, the all important first impression that any vehicle conveys about the way it will drive. This one feels sharp, purposeful, and from the very start, beautifully composed over our country's terrible tarmac. I'll begin with that sharpness which is down to the impressive steering, an area in which, to be honest, I thought this model might disappoint given that this car marks the brand's first adoption of the kind of efficient electric power steering system that almost everyone else has been using for years. In the event, it turns out that the engineers could have got with the program and dumped their old hydraulic racks a lot earlier. For with this XC, they've delivered a setup with all the sensitivity and feel you could ask for. Building on this is the class-leading excellence of the ride and handling compromise. 
it's delivered here as a result of Jaguar's decision to spend big on suspension with a sophisticated setup that gives you double wishbones at the front and an integral link suspension system at the rear. The result is a combination of supple stiffness that soaks up tears in the tarmac, it really does deliver a sports car style connection with the road ahead that no rival can better. So good is it that the usual caveats I tend to make in these reviews about avoiding larger alloy wheel sizes and stiffer sports suspension don't need quite as much emphasis here. In a less positive piece of news for Jaguar's bottom line, I'd also say that the setup is good enough to alleviate any real need for the optional adaptive suspension system that allows you to adjust the ride in order to suit the road you're on and the mood you're in. It's as well that the suspension setup works so effectively for the designers behind this car have sacrificed quite a lot in order to accommodate it. Primarily the weight savings achieved as part of this model's aluminium architecture. Impressively, over 75% of this XE's structure is fashioned from aluminium, and probably even more of it would have been had the engineers not needed to weight the back end up a little with a few heavier steel items to hit the perfect 50-50 weight distribution needed for ultimate driving satisfaction in this class. Make no mistake, that ultimate driver's car accolade is what Jaguar's aiming at here. The brand insisting this car to have usurped BMW's 3 Series as the most rewarding steer in this segment. That's quite a claim, but I can see many XE owners feeling it to be justified. True, there's still a sense of sharp alacrity and connectedness that you get at the wheel of a 3 Series that nothing else can quite match. But this Jaguar gets closer to that dynamic benchmark than any C-Class or Audi A4 has ever done, and in the process delivers ride quality that betters that of the BMW. There's an adaptive dynamics system that modifies the car's responses to the conditions and your driving style, and you get a standard torque vectoring by braking setup that helps get the power down through really sharp corners though this car is really at its best, not on a tight rally stage style back road, but on a route with quick sweeping open bends over which it sweeps imperiously from turn to turn, soaking up undulations with perfect poise. It's an impressive showing. If you're gonna drive like this, then you'll want the car to be as much in the mood as you are. Something possible thanks to the XC's standard Jaguar drive control system, one of those setups now common in this segment that can alter throttle response, steering feel, and auto gear shift change timings dependent on the way you want to drive. Here, you can change the behavior of the car across four different settings. The standard and fuel efficient eco modes are the ones you'll be using most often once you've had a play with the dynamic setting that, as advertised, sharpens throttle response and weights up the steering for when you're pressing on. There's also a winter option that dampens acceleration and applies more gradual traction in slippery conditions, times when you'll also appreciate the ASPC, All Surface Progress Control System. Fitted to automatic models, this works as a kind of low speed cruise control at speeds of up to 90 miles an hour on difficult surfaces such as snow, ice, wet grass or mud. You simply set the speed you want to go, steer and leave the car to take care of the rest. Automatic models will make up the majority of XE sales. Indeed, the 8-speed ZF box in question is mandatory if you're one of the minority of buyers looking for petrol power in this car. Green pump fueled variants get this smooth shifting transmission mated to a 2-litre Ford-derived engine developing either 200 or 240 PS. I'm trying the faster of the two units here, the one borrowed from the Focus ST hot hatch, an engine that nonetheless suits this more luxury orientated model very well, giving it a decent turn of pace. As a result, the performance figures you can expect from the lesser 200 PS model, 0 to 62 miles an hour in 7.7 .7 seconds en route to 147 miles an hour, are here improved to 6.9 seconds and 155 miles an hour. If you want more, then you'll want the potent 340 PS XES, which borrows its supercharged 3.0-litre V6 from the F-Type sports car and powers to 62 miles an hour in just 5.1 seconds, en route to 155 miles an hour. 
Most XC customers though will be looking for a diesel, specifically in this case a 2 litre unit given that unlike its rivals Jaguar can't yet offer a wide range of black pump fuelled engines. Still, this one should satisfy the majority of business folk. A clean sheet, so-called Ingenium series design that's unbettered in this segment when it comes to efficiency. It's a little rumbly on startup, but settles down nicely once you're on the move, developing all of its pulling power once you get above around 2,000 revs. There's 380 Newton meters of it if you opt for the 163 PS model, a figure rising to 430 Newton meters if you get your XC 2 litre D in the 180 PS state of tune that most will want. Whatever diesel variant you decide upon, you'll get the chance to order it with a feature that's quite rare to find on a Jaguar, a conventional manual gearbox. This stick shifter is quite a good one too, but there's no real performance penalty in opting for the 8-speed automatic that most will want, especially if you're quick with the auto's steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. Either way, 62 miles an hour from rest occupies 8.2 seconds on the way to 132 miles an hour in the 163 PS model, while the 180 PS variant improves those figures to 7.8 seconds and 140 miles an hour. As its predecessor, the Mark II model was in the 60s, this XE is unmistakably a Jaguar. Its upscale proportions delivering the kind of dynamic and purposeful look needed for success in this segment. It's unmistakably a modern Jaguar too, so there are a few of the retro touches that have so characterised and maturely pigeonholed some of the brand's other modern era designs like the S-Type and the X-Type. Instead, the XE echoes the styling approach first established by its larger XF showroom stablemate with an aggressive grille, a strongly sculpted bonnet, a steeply raked windscreen and a rising waistline. The resulting shape catches the eye and cleaves the air like no Jaguar before it, registering a phenomenally low 0.26 CD drag coefficient. It's not afraid to be different either, not only in how it looks, but also in how it's made. This is the lightest and stiffest car the brand has ever built, thanks to the fact that over 75% of its structure is fashioned from aluminium, a proportion far higher than you'll find in any other rival in this class. Now this ought to make the XC significantly lighter than its competitors, but what it actually does is to compensate for Jaguar's use of quite a weighty but technically advanced suspension setup, ensuring that this car tips the scales at about the same 1500 kilogram curb weight you'd find in a rival BMW 3 Series. Still, both models enjoy a useful weight saving of around 75 kilograms over a Mercedes C-Class which perhaps accounts for their marginal running cost superiority in this segment. Jaguar's use of aluminium dates back to its Ford-owned days and the launch of the third generation XJ Saloon in 2003. But the company's learned to use this material far more extensively now, with the result that in this XE, only the boot floor and the suspension subframes remain fashioned from steel. The resulting so-called aluminium intensive architecture represents the kind of bodywork technology you don't expect to see used so extensively at this price point, employed in this case because it's an integral part of a completely new modular vehicle platform that Jaguar plans to go on and use in other much more expensive models. This all further underlines the way the brand now thoroughly understands what buyers like so much about the very best contenders in the compact executive segment. Namely, the way they make you feel as if you're in something much larger and more upmarket. The dimensions also help in that regard. It's slightly longer, wider and lower than a rival BMW 3 Series and offers a slightly longer wheelbase. Plus there's a bit more driveway presence than the usual German alternatives offer too. The broad headlights and the wide mesh grille delivering a long, low look that's further emphasised by the signature J-Blade running lights and the R-Sport body kit fitted to the car we're trying here. In profile, the shape is simple but effective with powerful rear haunches and an XF-style coupe-like rear window line. 
Two feature lines define these sharply drawn flanks, though these are so subtle that their impact can be lost with some of the colours on offer. There's a lower crease rising from the bumper along the flanks and culminating at the tail, and a higher, more accentuated line that takes as its starting point these Jaguar-branded chromed side vents, one of the many design cues borrowed from the company's F-Type sports car. Further evidence of performance technology lies with the front bumper ducts that channel airflow over the surface of the front wheels to reduce drag. The rear end isn't quite as striking. There's a very Audi-like feel here with short cropped overhangs, twin tailpipes and a neatly integrated spoiler. Still, at least the F-Type Qs continue, that model apparently inspiring the look of these high-intensity LED tail lights that feature a distinctive roundel bisected by a horizontal line. More distinctive is the high-mounted centre brake light, a beautifully integrated full LED blade that spans the full width of the rear screen's top edge. While we're here, we'll have a look at the boot. A trunk that at 455 litres in size is 25 litres smaller than that provided by rival BMW and Mercedes models. That figure falls to 450 litres if, as we would, you specify a proper spare wheel. But even so, that's still big enough for a couple of big suitcases and an assortment of small bags. If you need room for more, you'll have to pay extra to get the 40-20-40 split folding rear bench that most will want for the accommodation of longer items. If you have something long to carry, like say a set of skis, then you can push the middle section forward. While if you simply can't resist that IKEA flat pack furniture, then uh, you can push both the sections down for capacious space. If that's not enough, then you'll probably need to be talking to your dealer about the alternative sport brake estate body shape. It's at this point that some potential buyers might be tempted to take a walk over to the other side of their Jaguar showroom and size up the brand's larger but only slightly more expensive XF model, which offers a 540 litre boot and standard split folding seats. Time to take a seat at the wheel where you sit low, cocooned by a deep centre console that creates a cockpit style feel. There isn't perhaps the really high end premium feel that you get in a better appointed Mercedes C Class, but with a careful choice of cabin decor, buyers can get themselves a cabin easily on par with that of a rival BMW 3 Series and Audi's A4. There's a wide choice of technical fabrics and fine grain leathers contrasting with twin needle stitching along with finishing in either gloss black, textured aluminium, carbon fibre or contemporary wood veneer. There are interesting touches too like these smart metal finished air vents that extend the fascia to nestle into the door casings and of course Jaguar's trademark rotary automatic gear shifter that glides up into the palm of your hand on startup. The dished three-spoke leather stitched wheel is also distinctive if slightly overbuttoned, with cruise control functions fitted on one side and switches for driving information adjustments on the other. Through it you view an instrument binnacle dominated by a rather low-res driving information display and a pair of deeply cowled dials that Jaguar would prefer you recognised from their F-Type sports car rather than a Range Rover Evoque. Not that you'll need to be looking at them very much if you opt for the head-up display setup that projects key information into your line of sight at the bottom of the windscreen with greater clarity than rival systems can manage. Also attempting to deliver cabin clarity is the feature that dominates the centre console, the colour touchscreen that lies at the heart of the XE's latest generation in-control infotainment system. It's smart and clear to look at, though at 8 inches in size is significantly smaller than the 10.2 inch screen that's offered in this model's XF Stablemate. That doesn't especially bother me, but I am a little surprised that Jaguar has chosen not to provide the kind of iDrive style rotary infotainment controller dial that direct compact executive segment rivals offer, perhaps because of the possible confusion this might have created with the similar looking rotary gear selector that I mentioned earlier. 
This means that commands you can't input via the steering wheel buttons have to be submitted via the often inexact process of voice control if you don't want to end up with stabbing away at the touchscreen and covering it with fingerprints. To be fair, the system screen and voice functionality do work well, and the general layout and ease of use the in-control setup offers is a big step forward from the Jaguar Land Rover conglomerate's previous efforts at infotainment. It not only deals with the expected audio, climate, telephone and navigation functions, but also allows access to a whole suite of in-control connected car technologies. Most will want the in-control apps feature that allows you to select from a whole series of downloadable compatible apps that will make it easy to do anything from making a conference call to finding a parking space or booking a hotel room. There's also in-control protect, a system that connects you through to assistance in the event of a breakdown or an accident. And an in-control remote feature by which you can monitor your fuel level and range remotely on your smartphone get help in finding your car in a crowded car park, or even check if you've left the doors or the sunroof open. Additional options include an in-control Wi-Fi system that creates in your car a mobile 3G Wi-Fi hotspot, and an in-control secure package that will track your XE relentlessly should it be stolen. As for practicalities, well, it's true that the door bins will struggle to hold anything much larger than a can of fizzy drink, but you do get a reasonably sized glove box, a couple of cup holders, a holder for your sunglasses, and a small storage area beneath the armrest that gives you a USB connection, a 12 volt power point, and an aux in socket. Time to take a seat in the rear. Here the doors open nice and wide to help alleviate any possible issues with clonking your head as you manoeuvre around the coupe style rear roof line. Now you might expect that to deliver possible compromises in headroom too, though in the event you'd have to be a basketball stature to notice too many issues. Initially the high rear deck makes it appear to be a little claustrophobic. But get yourself comfortable, maybe fold down this centre armrest with its twin cup holders and stretch your elbows out a bit and you'll find that it's a little more spacious than it first appears. Mind you, my impression of that may be influenced by the way this car's optional panoramic glass roof fills the cabin with extra light. Even if you're a six-footer sitting behind a front occupant of similar stature, you should still have an inch or so of legroom to spare, thanks in part to the deeply scalloped seat backs. As usual in this segment, this is a rear bench better suited to the needs of two people than three, thanks not only to the restricted width, but also to this chunky transmission tunnel. The situation is similar, though, with all obvious rivals. A compact executive saloon is, after all, inevitably just that. XC pricing sits mainly in the £27,000 to £35,000 bracket, assuming that you're looking at the 2-litre petrol and diesel variants almost all buyers will be considering. Most will want the saloon body style, but the Coventry Mark has also developed a Sport Break Estate variant for those needing more space. The bottom end of that pricing span buys you the 2 litre 200 PS petrol derivative, complete with the automatic gearbox you'll have to have if you intend to fuel this Jaguar from the green pump. It's a lot of car for the money, but it also costs a lot more to run than an XE would if it were to be fitted with one of the brand's impressive British-built Ingenium 2-litre diesel engines. These are power plants so efficient that you'd probably have to start your search for an XE by trying one, even given the significant premium Jaguar is asking over petrol power. A diesel Ingenium XE model costs from just over £30,000, a price tag that gets you the base 163 PS variant, though most will want to find the further £500 premium being asked for the pokier 180 PS version of this engine. Either way, you'll need to remember that on a diesel XE, automatic transmission costs an extra £1,700 more. Otherwise, that only leaves the minority interest performance petrol models. At the top of the range lies the potent supercharged V6-powered XES, 
but that variant requires a £45,000 budget and will require deep pockets from those prepared to fuel and tax it. Buyers tempted by that model but needing to keep their initial spend and running cost returns realistic may be better off looking at an XC fitted with a 240 PS version of that 2 litre petrol engine I mentioned previously. A car that with R Sport trim like I have here can deliver much of what the XCS offers for an asking price not far above £33,000. On to the value proposition that XE pricing represents. Now, I should perhaps start by pointing out that affordable versions of Jaguar's larger XF model don't actually cost very much more than their XE counterparts. Though, if you ascend the XF range and look at plusher, pokier variants, the price differential between XE and XF ownership widens considerably. For our purposes here, though, we'll assume that you want a compact executive saloon rather than a full-sized one. With this in mind, how does the XE stack up? Well, if you're familiar with that compact executive market segment, then you may well already know quite a bit about the three key rivals it's up against, all newly launched or substantially revised in recent times. BMW's sixth generation 3 Series established a fresh benchmark in this sector from its launch in 2012, but needed a thorough overhaul in the summer of 2015 as it faced up to tough competition from the impressive fourth generation Mercedes C-Class launched in 2014 and the impending arrival of Audi's fifth generation A4 in the autumn of 2015. Now, it probably won't surprise you to learn that all three of these German models are priced very comparably. So Jaguar has costed this car to follow suit. The British brand, though, points out that an XE is significantly better equipped, which for some buyers may give this model an advantage over that 3 Series, C-Class or A4 they or their company were just about to buy. If you are seriously considering this car as an alternative to the usual German suspects in this segment, you may also be the kind of person who's had their eye on a few of the other alternatives in this category. Now, here at Car and Driving, we have a soft spot for the very underrated third-generation Lexus IS, which, in petrol-electric hybrid form, offers a comparably priced and cleaner alternative to diesel power in this sector that will be quieter and cheaper to fuel. Those buyers who are set on wanting a diesel may also want to consider Volkswagen's 8th generation Passat or Volvo's super frugal S60 D4, both cars that will save you around 20% over a diesel XE. Whether they're really credible compact executive segment alternatives, though, is another question entirely. If, having considered all of this, you conclude that it is an XC that you really want, then you're going to need to know just how generous Jaguar has been when it comes to standard specification. And the answer is that even the most affordable SE versions of this car are pretty well equipped. All come with 17-inch alloy wheels, auto headlamps and wipers and rear parking sensors. Inside, there's dual-zone climate control, a keyless start system, cruise control, an auto-dimming rear-view mirror and a Jaguar drive control system that allows you to alter steering feel, throttle response and the change times of the auto gearbox to suit the way that you want to drive. Plus, there's an 80-watt six-speaker DAB sound system along with satellite navigation and Bluetooth phone connectivity. All of these features operable through an advanced infotainment system controllable either by voice via the 8-inch dashboard colour touchscreen or by buttons on the leather-covered multifunction steering wheel. You can connect USB sticks and iPods into this setup and use it via a standard in-control connect setup to download a whole series of clever smartphone apps. Of course, ideally, you'd want to go further than that. Pay a premium of £1,000 over base SE spec and you'll be upgraded to Prestige trim with its heated leather seats and extended interior mood lighting. A premium of £2,500 over SE trim gets you this R-Sport model complete with an R-Sport body kit, smarter wheels, Xenon HID headlamps and sports suspension. Finally, find £3,200 over base SE trim and you can get yourself top portfolio spec with upgraded Windsor soft grain leather trim that covers not only the 10-way electrically adjustable front seats but also the dashboard too. 
Plus, there's embossed aluminium veneer trim and Jaguar's full house 380 watt Meridian sound system. I'd certainly want to consider that Meridian audio system as an option on lesser XC models. With careful choices from your music collection, this 11 speaker and 12 channel Class D DSP amplifier setup can create a memorable travelling experience. Talking of careful choices, potential buyers will also want to spend some time in selecting between the various cloths, leathers and veneers that Jaguar offers, along with illuminated tread plates and an alloy wheel collection offering the choice of 17, 18, 19 or even 20 inch rims. The bigger wheels, like the uh, R-Sport model's sport suspension setup, uh, inevitably have a slightly deteriorating effect on ride quality. If you do want bigger rims, uh, then you've the option of talking to your dealer about the optional adaptive suspension setup that allows you to tweak the ride to suit the road you're on and the mood you're in. If you care about aesthetics, then you're probably going to want to tick the box for the Style Pack, which gives you a range of stylish finishing touches. Stainless steel pedals, a leather-topped gear selector and gloss black trim for the side power vents and the mirror covers. There's more of that gloss black exterior trim if you go for the black pack, while the panoramic glass pack gives you privacy glass, an electric rear sunblind and a lovely panoramic sunroof. There are other packs for things like power folding mirrors, memory seats, rear seat heating, front seat cooling and an electrically adjustable steering wheel. And other niceties include a rear screen entertainment setup. You'll probably want to pair up with the in-control in-car Wi-Fi system. There's also a refrigerated compartment that can sit in the middle of the rear bench. Those with more practical priorities might bemoan the fact that you have to pay extra for features like a split-folding rear seat and a space saver spare wheel. These are people especially targeted by perhaps the most sensible three of the extra cost packs your dealer will want to tell you about. The Sport Pack includes roof bars, a cycle carrier and a boot load space organiser. Then there's the Touring Pack with its headrest mounted coat hanger, seat back leather storage pouches, uh, boot area side nets and luggage area mat. And an Outdoor Pack that gives you mud flaps, rubber floor mats and a rubber load space mat. Other optional practicalities come with a power convenience pack that gives you a powered boot lid and a smart key system with keyless entry. And a cold climate pack that provides heat for the steering wheel, the seats, the washer jets and the windscreen glass. I'd also want to look at one of the parking packs that start with front sensors and a reversing camera but go on to include everything from a surround view camera system to a parallel parking setup that'll help you identify the tighter space then steer you into it. There's also a Jaguar in control secure system that provides a 24 hour vehicle tracking service for rapid recovery should your XE ever be stolen. On to safety, which includes all the usual features you'd expect. Twin front, side and curtain airbag, so strangely no driver's knee bag. Isofix child seat fastenings, a tyre pressure monitoring system and a pedestrian friendly bonnet. Plus the usual electronic assistance for traction and stability control that uh, in automatic models can also feature a clever ASPC all surface progress control system, a kind of low speed cruise control setup that will give you extra grip in slippery conditions. Anti-lock braking is aided by an emergency brake assist system for panic stops that will be advertised to following motorists by automatically activated hazard lights. Plus there's EDC engine drag torque control that reduces the chance of wheel lock-up such as might be caused by strong engine braking in slippery conditions, say if you selected too low a gear on a greasy road. There's also a torque vectoring by braking setup that helps get the power down through the corners and hill launch assist to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. Jaguar has gone further too, fitting all versions of this car with the kind of cutting edge safety technology you have to pay extra for in most rivals. Take this 3D stereo camera that's mounted in front of the rear view mirror. It can provide a traffic sign recognition system that pictures road signs as you pass and displays them on the dash. 
Plus, it offers a lane departure warning system that stops dozy drivers from veering out of their lanes on the highway. And their standard autonomous emergency braking that sees the camera scan the road ahead for potential accident hazards as you drive at speeds of up to 50 miles an hour. If one is detected, you'll be warned. If you don't respond or aren't able to, the brakes will automatically be applied for collision avoidance or mitigation. It'll be hard to have an accident with all of that fitted, but if the worst ever should happen, you'll be glad of the XE's standard in-control protect system. In a crash, this will automatically alert the emergency services with your exact GPS location. Could be a lifesaver. Want to go further? Well, of course you can. There are adaptive headlamps with an intelligent high beam system that dips them at night in the face of oncoming traffic. And if you have an automatic variant, you can opt for the extra cost highway technology pack. This includes adaptive cruise control that uses a radar to automatically keep you a safe distance from the car in front at cruising speeds. The system even able to apply emergency braking if it detects an impending collision. The pack also includes blind spot monitoring with closing vehicle sensing, there to stop you from dangerously pulling out to overtake another car. In addition, there's a reverse traffic detect system that warns you of approaching traffic when you're reversing out of spaces. Plus, the pack also throws in an infrared reflective windscreen, onto which a head-up display projects key information so that you don't have to take your eyes off the road. Here's an area in which this XE simply has to be on the pace. Business buyers rightly often feel that there's little to choose between the key contenders in the compact executive market segment, and it's therefore not unusual for final decisions to be almost entirely based on things like fuel and CO2 readings, depreciation and overall running costs. If you need a single answer as to why it took Jaguar so long to return to this segment following the demise of the X-Type in 2009, then it's here that you'll find it. They simply didn't have an engine efficient enough to enable them to properly compete. But now they do. The British-built 2.0-litre Ingenium diesel unit is now the joint efficiency class leader in this sector, matching the best that BMW can manage with its efficient dynamics technology in its super-frugal 320D ED model, and fractionally improving on the showing of a rival Mercedes C220 Bluetech. With manual transmission, the 163 PS 2.0-litre DXE variant was the very first car in this segment to dip below the significant 100 grams per kilometre barrier, with a 99 grams per kilometre showing that'll see retail customers paying no road tax and business users qualifying for the lowest 10% BIK company car taxation rate. This derivative was also the first car in this class to approach 75 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle, with a 74.3 miles to the gallon showing that will see you travelling between 3 to 4 miles more on every gallon than that Mercedes rival I just mentioned. Inevitably, those readings fall a little if you opt for the 8-speed automatic gearbox most buyers will want, but they're still class leading. Expect 68.9 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 106 grams per kilometre of CO2. Get your XC 2 litre D with 180 PS and the returns worsen only fractionally to 67.3 miles to the gallon and 109 grams per kilometre. A reading that remains the same whether you choose manual or automatic transmission. All these figures assume of course that the driver is prepared to play his or her part and has selected the cleanest and most frugal eco setting from the Jaguar Drive Adaptive Dynamics Control System. There's also an eco data section of the In Control Apps infotainment screen that shows you how many gallons of fuel you've consumed in the last hour, uh, rates your driving style and gives you various uh, trip computer functions. So, how has this Coventry brand achieved such an impressive set of efficiency results with this car? Things like turbocharging, direct injection, variable valve timing and engine stop and start systems all help. But you'll find all these things on every other contender in this segment. No, what's probably done most to help its cause is light weight, thanks to the fact that over 75% of the structure of the car is fashioned from aluminium. 
This is a proportion that far exceeds that of any other car in this class, and as a result, this XE's 1,500 kilogram curb weight makes it about 75 kilograms lighter, that's the combined weight of an average adult and child, than, say, a comparable Mercedes C-Class. Combine that with the sophisticated exhaust gas recirculation system and highly efficient selective catalytic reduction setup used by the Ingenium engine, and also factor in the uh, realization that this is the most aerodynamic Jaguar ever built, the drag coefficient is just 0.26 CD, and you've the recipe for this car's impressive set of cost of ownership returns. Or at least they're impressive if you're looking at a diesel model. The brand still lags behind a bit when it comes to petrol power, an area still to benefit from Ingenium technology. As a result, the entry-level 200 PS 2.0-litre automatic model manages only 37.7 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 179 grams per kilometre of CO2, a showing which puts it around 30% behind the figures returned by equivalent versions of its obvious German rivals. Still, at least these figures don't worsen if you opt for the pokier 240 PS version of this engine. Interestingly, the XC does a bit better in this regard when it comes to the figures of the variant you really would expect to be costly to run, the supercharged 340 PS 3 litre V6 S petrol variant. Here the figures aren't really too far removed from those of the base petrol version. Expect 34.9 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 194 grams per kilometre of CO2. Now that's not far off the showing of a rival Mercedes C450 AMG Sport model. What else? Uh, well, you get the usual unremarkable three-year warranty, and service intervals are set at 21,000 miles or every 24 months, whichever comes first. And it would be sensible to consider one of Jaguar's service plans that cover you for virtually everything in advance. There's a standard mileage service plan that covers you for five years and 50,000 miles, or a high mileage service plan that covers five years and 75,000 miles. As for residual values, Jaguar seems convinced the numbers will work in its favour, talking of residuals for this car of up to 45%. This confidence borne out by the showing achieved by the brand's larger XF model. That leaves only insurance. You'll be looking at a rating of between 22 and 24 for the 2 litre D 163 PS model and between 25 and 27 for the same car with 180 PS. Petrol people will be rated at between groups 24 and 27 for the 200 PS 2 litre petrol variant and at group 29 for the same car with 240 PS. The ratings top out at 35E for the flagship XES supercharged petrol model. Bold, innovative, forward thinking and able to level with the class best, this XE is the most credible Jaguar sports saloon we've seen since the 60s. It chases bigger sales but unlike some of its predecessors hasn't diluted crucial elements of brand credibility. On the contrary, it's a model company founder Sir William Lyons might have been proud of. He sought to make cars that made their owners feel alive. And the objective of this one is exactly that, aiming at nothing less than a fresh, dynamic benchmark in the German brand-dominated compact executive segment, a target it gets very close to achieving. Failings are few. Yes, buyers will lack a little when it comes to boot space, and some may find selected areas of the styling approach to be slightly conservative. There's nothing wrong with the fundamentals of this design, though and the aluminium underpinnings that lie beneath that taut bodywork are more sophisticated than anything previously seen in this segment. Potential business buyers will also note that in important areas like safety, connectivity and residual values, this car is unbettered in its class. Plus, they'll also struggle to find diesel efficiency figures that improve on this model, thanks to Jaguar's impressively clean and frugal Ingenium technology. In short, this is a car that's been worth the wait. BMW, Mercedes and Audi have had it too easy for too long. With the XE, Jaguar could well gate-crash the party in style. <laughs> <laughs>